Today's fourth class in the Beginner Series is on backbends. Hello and welcome to episode 132 of Namaste Yoga. Thank you very much for joining us. I want to thank Squeeze Yoga Clothing, our sponsor for our beautiful clothing. Today I'm wearing one of my favorite designs of hers, the, um, the flying heart design. I chose to wear this one today for the backbends class because we're opening our hearts today and I think that's such a beautiful design. I'm wearing, oops, it's on the other leg the uh, cropped yoga plant too with the, the uh, flying heart design too. I like these ones. I know um, the leggings are new this year, but these ones are nice because they're a little bit cooler. They let a little more air in at this time of year. So these ones are nice for the summer. I also want to share a testimonial from a fellow Canadian from Quebec. He says, I want to thank you so much for sharing your time improving our well-being. Yoga is new to me and your beginner series just happened to pop up at the perfect time. I really enjoy your way of teaching. You create such a feeling of proximity being down to earth. I feel lucky becoming your student. I sure won't miss the uh, next class. Actually, I can't wait. Keep that great smile. The world needs more people like you. Namaste and he says best luck with the migraines too. So I also want to say thank you for making us Canada's most popular free one hour online yoga show. <laughs> That's gonna make Tim really happy. He's been asking me to punch out a tagline like that for a long time. So yes, you've made us Canada's most popular free one hour online yoga show. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can sign up for our newsletter and receive a free morning and evening yoga sequence. Actually, if you go to our website, it's like totally spanking brand new. Tim's been working his little behind off on that. He was up pretty much all last night <laughs> making that transfer. If you go to melissawest.com, that's M-E-L-I-S-S-A, one L, two S's, west, as in north, south, east, west, dot com, um, you can find that and check, check it out. It's spanking new. We got a probably you know clean clean things up fix things up a little bit now but it's up um, and you can sign up for our membership site there too we still got that special pricing going on for a little while longer might keep that for the first year um, it's $6.95 a month $69.95 for the year um, you can choose which pricing works best for you So we added new content to the membership site um, for this past month, which was June. <laughs> the Yoga for Posture, Yoga for Anxiety, and Yoga for Summer. Um, and the Yoga for Summer is part of my classic video series that uh, were on DVD. And we kind of add those DVDs in as digital downloads once a month, and now there's $105 worth of those. So you can see that the value of this site is really high. Um, and this month, I'm, I'm going to be starting to film, actually this week, a new series of yoga classes for a women's menstrual cycle. But it's not just for women, because it ties into the moon cycle. So it goes with the energy of the moon. And the energy of the moon has to do with periods of um, manifesting, of birthing new things, and also letting go of things. So when's a good idea to bring new things into your life, and when's a good idea to let go of things in your life? So it's not just for women. 
Um, and so we tie our yoga into that and, and, um, and, and really work with Mother Earth's energies to enhance those things for us. So that's going to be really, really cool. And that was something that the members requested. And what I try to do each month is put content on there that the members want. So that's really cool. So that's all on the membership site coming up. And I'll be um, adding that. Oh, so I'm go also going to add the video for Yoga de for Depression this month too. And the other thing that's been really cool on the membership site that people are just going nuts over is I'm putting together these weekly challenges where I tie together a few videos and maybe a meditation or something and then I put it together with a reflection for the week uh, for people to do and then people comment on how it was doing those and it's almost like you know those meditation books where you open it up and you have your reflection for the day or for the week it's like that and people are really jiving on those they're finding them really groovy so like last month we had over 300 views on the weekly challenge and you know way more than 50 posts and people really talking about them so people are loving that so check out that membership site people are loving it and it's a great way for you to you know commit to your practice a little bit more and engage in your own practice and um, we'd love to have you as a member also you can like us on Facebook at your namaste yoga and and thank you very much for leaving your comments on iTunes and YouTube. We appreciate that so much. Okay, so this week we're going to be working with backbends. Um, you're going to need one block for today's class. If you don't have a block, you could use um, a blanket, a, a nice stiff blanket that you could fold up. And the way we're going to be working with backbends is just by preparing your spine with some twists and side bending. Um, back bends are all about opening up your heart and the one that we've chosen today too is also about opening up your throat. So this can be a little anxiety producing for people. It's a little bit of a vulnerable area that we normally keep pretty protected in the world. So that's okay. <laughs> we'll have lots of time to come back into our cocoon afterwards in a counter pose and we'll go gently and we'll just like we do uh, in the classes we have lots of preparatory poses to get you ready to get your spine ready with twists and side bends to to do that okay so i'm going to get you ready uh, by getting you to rest back and lie down on your back and we'll start with the centering so we'll start with about maybe five minutes of just bringing you to shift your attention from the multitasking that sent, uh, where your focus is everywhere to bring your focus inside now. Lie on your back. If your low back is bothering you at all, you can bend your knees and place your feet flat on the floor. And take a deep breath in through your nose and let it fall out of your mouth. <sighs> and let your body settle into the ground. And take as many of those falling out breaths as you feel like you might need to land here right now. Now let your breath return to normal breathing, in and out through your nose. Just notice what's happening with your breath right now. Where do you feel it in your body? There's no right or wrong answer for this, no better or best. We're just becoming curious about your breath, discovering where you feel it in your body. Seeing what your breath has to tell you about yourself in this moment.
what is the quality of your breath like? The sensation of your breath. How would you describe the length of your breath? The depth of your breath? information does your breath give you about yourself in this moment? And no right or wrong answer about this, only what you are intuiting yourself. No breath police gonna come and arrest you to with getting the wrong answer. There is no wrong answer. And then take a deep breath in through your nose. And let it fall out of your mouth. <sighs> now tune into your physical body. Notice your feet, your legs, your pelvis, your lower back, your belly, your torso, your arms, your upper back, your shoulders. in your head. And as you become aware of your whole body, just notice what stands out, what's calling for your attention this morning. And what other parts maybe seem a little quieter And take a deep breath in through your nose. And let it fall out of your mouth. <sighs> take a moment to reflect on what's going on in your life right now. Your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, your spirit, family, work. time. All of these things that you've set aside just for the next hour while you come to the yoga mat. And what's it like to put those to the side for a moment? And truly, what is it like to have those with you beside you as you come to your yoga mat? And then take a deep breath in through your nose. And let it fall out of your mouth. bringing all those parts of you together again now. Your breath. 
your body, your thoughts, your emotions, all those things that are going on in your life right now. And set an intention for how this practice could best serve you in your life right now. What is it that you would like to receive from your practice today? Why did you choose this practice? What is it that you wanted to receive? And then when you feel ready, you can stay lying on your back. You can start to just wiggle and stretch out a little bit. We're going to start to prepare your spine for your back bends by doing a little side bend on your back here. So all you need to do is just bend your spine to the side. So just check in with how far you've gone. Is it too much or too little or just right? You want to feel like something's happening where your mind can stay engaged with it and be curious about what's going on. Not so much that it's distracting or injurious or not too little that your mind can wander and become distracted. That's called choosing a good edge. And I think in our culture, we're conditioned to choose really crazy hard edges all the time. And in yoga, I think we have to retrain ourselves to choose more appropriate edges. Maybe a little softer edges. So feel your spine. Feel your breath. And then come back to the center. And then go ahead and do that side bend on the other side. This is just so beautiful here doing yoga here on the beautiful earth, on a beautiful sunny day under a beautiful tree. Last week we were under this dark cloud. <laughs> and this week we're so blessed with a beautiful sunny day. It's so gorgeous. Feel the sides of your, the vertebra of your spine opening up. And breathe. and then come back to the center. And then I'm going to show you one of my favorite ways to work with this twist. One of the things that is a really common yoga injury, and now you're just beginners, but those of you that get going in yoga and the longer you stay with it, 
Well, one of the things that you'll find um, more experienced yogis have is SI joint injuries, and it's just from overstretching, hip stretches, twists, um, forward bends, they get SI joint injuries. And so it's really important to keep the SI joint stable. That's the joint between your sacrum where that keeps your sacrum and pelvis connected. And so this is a really nice way to keep that joint stable, to keep the alignment between your sacrum and your pelvis aligned so that there's no um, shearing of that joint if you use this block. And if you don't have a block, you could roll up a blanket for this. So this is a really great trick. What you're gonna do, we're gonna do a twist, but you're gonna put the block between your leg and place your arms out to the side in a soft T. So press into your feet, lift up your pelvis, move your hips over to the right side of your mat a bit, and then lower your legs over to the left side of your mat. So what this does is it just keeps your right, top right leg straight rather than dropping. So when this leg stays level, it keeps that joint from sh uh, stable rather than shearing. So you're gonna turn your head and look over your right shoulder. And this is a twist to help create flexibility in your spine, will help prepare your spine for your back bend. Now in twist, you wanna focus on your breath out. So focus on your exhalation, breathing your belly back towards your spine. Having the block between your knees also helps to keep your knees stacked too. And if you have to choose between keeping your knees stacked and your shoulders down, keep your knees stacked again for your SI joint. If you injure that, it hurts a lot. <laughs> I speak from experience. And you can also just fill the space that where your shoulders off the ground with a blanket, just stick a blanket under there. Okay, you can bring your legs back to the center. You have to press into your feet and bring your hips back to the center. And then what the heck, let's do bridge pose as a counter pose. Take your hands down by the side of your body and just pick up your hips in the center. And then the block is great in between your knees here in the center. Feel your feet connecting to the ground. And then slowly lower down. Take your arms out into a soft T again. Press into your feet. Lift up your pelvis, lower it over to the left side of your mat, and then you're gonna take your knees over to the right side of your mat. Okay, and look over your left shoulder. So here you can really see what I'm talking about with your SI joint. Now, it's your sacrum here that you want to be level, perpendicular to the ground. You don't want it to be off to the side because that's where that shearing of the joint happens. So. The block really helps to keep your legs level, your knees stacked, this really straight. And if you do have an injury here, it just eliminates any of that pain that might have previously happened there. 
a really nice alignment tool there. Focus on breathing out. The sunshine is fabulous. And then you're going to come back to the center. Place your feet on the ground. And bring your hips back to the center. Bring your hands down by the side of your body. And you can do that little bridge pose again. No, no big deals here. Just a little counter pose here. So just something symmetrical after that twist. And I'm just going to check and see if there's anything else I wanted to do here before we come to kneeling. So you hang out in that little tiny bridge pose. And then you can come down from your bridge and just hug your knees into your chest. And roll to your side. And come up onto all fours, yes. Okay. So we're going to do a little bit of cat pose again to prepare your spine to get ready for your back bends to lum limber up your spine. So come on to all fours. Spread your fingers nice and wide. That'll help to keep the weight out of your wrists if you bring it into the webs of your fingers. This is a really common complaint for beginners is your wrists. So s really spread your fingers. And I love how Anna Forrest talks about that, reaching into the webs of your hands. And this, I think, is just from, in our culture today, it's just from too much time on a mouse and computers and then PDAs. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm with you on that. I love my iPhone and texting. And our hands are just cramped right up. So I found, when I first started teaching 10 years ago, it was feet. It was like, okay, we gotta spread our feet, and now, 10 years later, it's like, oh my gosh, everybody's hands are just cramped right up. Now it's hands, hands, hands. So spread your hands as much as you can. They're, they're tight like crazy. So spread your hands as much as you can. And we're going to exhale, round up through your spine. And inhale, arch your spine. And here we're limbering up your spine, even though I spent all that time talking about your hands. <laughs> Exhale round, inhale arch. And because we are gonna focus on back bends today, I wanna focus on side bends and twists. So we'll do some cat stretching to the side. So just walk your hands over to one side, doesn't matter which, because we'll do both sides. Keep your, remember your hands spreading nice and wide. And exhale round. Have I told you what a gorgeous, stunningly amazing day it is here? Oh my gosh, I'm loving soaking up the sun. Perfect day for a back bend. If this beautiful sunny day doesn't make me want to open my heart, I don't know what will. And then we'll go over to the other side. So you can imagine your spine, the vertebrae of your spine, opening to the sides. Breathe out as you round your back up towards the ceiling or the sky if you're outside. And Breathe in as you open your heart towards the earth or the ground if you're inside. Okay. 
and then come back to the center. And then we're going to rotate your spine now. So inhale, open your left arm out to the side. Exhale, take your left hand between your wrist and your knee. Lower your left shoulder to the ground, the left side of your head to the ground. And there's your spinal rotation. So again, limbering up your spine, getting it ready, preparing it. So it's super easy for it to bend backwards. And here you're in a twist, so focus on breathing out, breathing your belly back towards your spine. You don't have to muscle it back, just exhale. And when you think you've finished exhaling, see if you can, if there's any more you can breathe out. slowly come out and we'll do that on the other side so inhale open your right arm up exhale reach your right arm through lower your right shoulder the right side of your head to the ground tuck your chin so the back of your neck is long keep your right shin connected to the ground the right top of your foot and remember to breathe Okay, and then slowly come up. You probably want me to face this way, don't you? <laughs> okay, so we're going to, no, the other way was great. <laughs> I thought I was too comfortable facing that way, so <laughs> probably you want me to face the other way, but anyway. Okay, now our back bend today is, requires that we have some openness in the front of our hips. And in fact, a lot of people this is what I learned from, you did, oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is what I learned from Esther Myers. We wanna access our back bends from our thoracic spine. A lot of people just do it by kind of dumping into our low backs. So what we wanna do is open up the fronts of our hips. Okay, so we're gonna do that by lunge pose. So take a step forward with your left foot. So lean forward into lunge pose. Feel an opening in the front of your right hip. So because we sit all the time in chairs, this is, there's never a dull moment in lunge pose, <laughs> okay? So you might not need to step forward very much. Feel your left foot heavy on the ground, sink into that, and then you're gonna come upright. And then what we're gonna add to this is focus on our spine. So sink and drop through your tailbone, reach up tall through your right arm, and you can even add a little side bend towards your left.
And while we've got all that hip opening going on, we can add more spinal work to it for our back bend by adding a twist. So take your right elbow to the outside of your left knee. Bring your left palm to your right palm. There's a twist. Okay, so come back to the center and we'll switch sides on that lunge. So you'll step forward with your right leg now. Lean forward. Feel that opening in the front of your right, left hip, sorry, now. And really get grounded through the front of your right foot. So feel the stability here. That's what I mean when I say get grounded. Sink into your right foot. Feel the strength of your front right leg. Come upright. We'll start by bringing that awareness to your spine now. Bring your left arm up. And you can add a little side bend to this. So lean over to your left side. Feel more of an opening in your left hip. Keep dropping your tailbone, the base of your spine. And then we can add a rotation of your spine. So you can take your left elbow to the outside of your right knee and bring your palms together. Keep breathing. And then we can come back to the center and you can come up to standing. All right, I'm loving this day. It's so perfect. <laughs> Look at our beautiful Lake Ontario. <laughs> no waves, calm, beautiful blue lake. Okay, from standing, we're gonna continue to prepare your spine. Take your feet, let's focus on our beautiful Tadasana mountain pose postures. Take your feet right underneath your hip bone. So when the yoga teachers say hip width apart, it means find your iliac crest, your hip bones, it means underneath your hip bone. So I know women that kind of do this kind of thing and we have a really skewed sense of where our bodies are at. So bring your feet underneath your hip bones and then feel your legs lengthen long out of your body so root them down like a root system of a tree and that'll give you a lot of stability and strength in your legs and feel your spine lengthen up inhale take your arms right up overhead you're gonna exhale side bend to one side so there's your spine limbering up again for your back bend breathe Lift up through your pelvic floor, draw your navel back towards your spine to support you here. You'll feel your core working here. Feel your feet on the ground.
Inhale, back up to the center. Exhale, side bend to the other side. And keep your right shoulder open. Keep drawing your belly back and up. Okay, great. And then release. You can take your feet. <laughs> There's a <laughs> nice piece of tape here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Now you're going to take your feet wide. Now you are going to take them wider than hip width apart. And just do a little twisting of your spine. So limbering your spine up. As you twist to the right, you're going to lift your left heel. As you twist to the left, you're going to lift your opposite heel. <laughs> You know what I mean. You know what to do in your bodies. Yeah. Put your right foot in, you put your right foot out. Do the hokey pokey. I like that t-shirt, I want that t-shirt. What if the hokey pokey was what it is really all about? <laughs> So this breath that goes with this too. You're gonna inhale in the center and exhale to the side. Great. That's enough for me because I'm getting dizzy. Okay. Now, we're going to do an opening for the front of your hips again, for your quads. So stand on your right leg, bend your left leg, hold on to a wall if you got one close to help you with your balance. You can hold on to your ankle. You're just opening up the front of your hip here. Roll your shoulder back and down. Tim's trying that behind the camera. Apparently, I'm, I think I'm making it look easy <laughs> compared to what he's doing. You're supposed to stay on one leg and hold it, Tim. Try and keep your knee dropped. to the other side. So soccer legs, Tim. It's all at soccer right now. Okay, try the other side. Whew. This side's different. That's weird, because for me, that's my left leg. For you guys, that's your right leg. Keep your ears back over your shoulders. And breathe. Keep your spine long. Okay, shaking it out, doing the hokey pokey. All right, oh, I would like to go back to uh, my mat. I know you're probably still on your mat for our back bend. We're gonna do camel pose because we're gonna use, I'm gonna show you how you can roll up your mat and 
protect your knees a little bit on your mat, okay? Okay, so you're gonna come to kneeling on your mat and I'm going to recommend that you double up your mat like this for underneath your knees for the next part. And if you're outside, it's so nice because the ground is nice and soft compared to hard floors inside. So you'll come onto your knees on the rolled up mat part. And we're gonna work with our back bend for today, camel pose. And I'm gonna show you lots of options and you don't have to do the whole thing. You can stop anytime you like and take a rest, okay? So this is, yoga is not a competition, okay? It's not a competition. So you gotta look after yourself and pay attention to your body. So let's try this. You're gonna take your hands and place them on your hips. Place your hands on your low back. Roll your shoulders back and down. Tuck your tail under. Oh, we were go I was gonna use your block. And to get you to play your, place your blocks between your knees, because what ends up happening is people beep, splay their knees open in this pose, and I don't want you to do that. Keep your block between your knees. Okay, roll your shoulders back and down. Draw your knees, to, elbows together. And tuck your tail under, and open up the fronts of your hips. That's all I want you to do, keep your chin tucked. Lift your heart up towards the ceiling. There you go. Keep holding on to your block. See how your knees start to go? <laughs> I can feel mine going out because I'm not holding on to the block as much. Take that block out now. And you're gonna come forward into child's pose. I'm gonna give you the option you can use, even use your block in child's pose here. Okay, and then you're gonna roll up, come back up. So you can stay with that, ooh, came out too fast. It came out way too fast. <sighs> I have very low blood pressure. <laughs> so I gotta come back down to the earth and ground myself. So what I wanted to say is you can stay with that one that we just did, or you can try this version that I'm going to show you. I'm going to come up slower this time. Come up slowly. The moral of that story is come up slowly. Okay. Tuck your toes under. That helps to make the distance to go but not as far. You're going to tuck your tail under, open up the fronts of your hips. Inhale, lift your left arm up and over. I'm going to reach over and hold on to your left heel and then arc your right arm up. Okay, and then you get to rest again. Come back down, use that block again. Ooh, I didn't use the block for 
the pose. That's okay, we'll do it next time. You get to rest in your counter pose because these back bends are no joke. Okay, so then you get to come out slowly. So we don't get to witness that catastrophe again. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna remember to put that block between my knees again. Okay. Still, my blood pressure must be like really low today because it's still, I'm gonna take a moment here again. Breathe, tuck your toes under. Feel the ground underneath you. Tuck your tail under. Inhale, reach your right arm up and over. Reach to your right heel. Lift your chest up. Lift your left arm up. Okay, and then you can come forward again into child's pose. Excuse me, you might want to turn the sound off when you sneeze. <coughs> One more. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> okay, and then child's pose again. More sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. <sighs> Those back bends really cleared something out of me. <laughs> slowly up and I'm thinking because this is a beginner class we're gonna leave it at that we could do both sides but I think that's good it's a beginner class let's leave it that was really good let's do a seated twist after uh, back bends you do twists to release any tension that might have been created in the spine keep coming forward Keep moving forward. The sun keeps moving. <laughs> Here we go. So you're going to sit with your legs straight out in front of you. And for this one, you're going to bend your left leg. Good job opening your beautiful flying hearts there. You know, it's, it's, um, it's not easy both it's not easy because physically we spend so much time with our hearts closed just because of everything we do and also you know psychologically there's just so many hurts and wounds that keep that area closed so good job and you see what happens <laughs> the kind of release that happens when you open that area up so good job opening your hearts let's do a twist now to 
release the tension. Cross your left leg over your right leg. Keep your right leg extended today. Wrap your right arm around your left leg. Turn towards it. Place your left hand at the base of your spine. Use it to help you prop your spine up. Turn towards your left leg. Again, a twist, so focus on breathing out. Breathing out will help you move more deeply into your twist. Keep your ears back over your shoulders. Keep your neck with your twist, so don't crane your neck around. I had a yoga teacher once, she used to get us to bring our necks back. doing great we're almost there untwist uncross your leg At the end of the series we're going to do a class where we put it all together we're doing each piece individually and then we'll put it all together at the end bend your right leg cross your right leg over your left leg keep your left leg extended keep your heel in the center wrap your left arm around your right leg turn towards it place your right hand at the base of your spine use it to help lengthen it up Bring your neck in line with the rest of your spine, ears over your shoulders. Breathe out. Come back to the center. Take your right leg, uncross it. Place your right foot on the inside of your left leg. Lift up nice and tall. Hinge forward your hips over your leg bone. Stretch out the back of your left leg. Janus or Sasana. Keep your chin tucked. Reach forward with your heart here. Navel to thigh, heart to shin. Slowly up, we'll switch sides. Extend your right leg out, bring your left leg in. Lift up tall through your spine, inhale. Exhale, hinge your hips over your right leg bone. Here it can be really useful if it's hard to get your pelvis to roll forward to prop yourself up, to sit up either on a block or on a couple of blankets almost Shavasana. Stay long through your spine. back and up, extend your leg out, and we are taking Shavasana together today because I am lying in this beautiful sunshine for five more minutes with you. Okay, so Tim, will you let us know when our five minutes are up? Let's go ahead and lie back together. 
Oh, so beautiful. If your low back is bothering you, you can always bend your knees. Here's a really nice position is to let your knees rest together. If your back isn't bothering you at all, you can just let your legs extend, your palms up beside you. Tuck your shoulder blades under to cup your heart. breath deepen, begin to bring yourself back, bend your knees, roll to your side, and slowly make your way up to seated. Take a moment now to 
reflect back on the class and see what stands out for you. What seems most significant. What is it that you're going to carry with you back into your life? Thank you for joining us for episode 132 of Namaste Yoga. Thanks for leaving your comments on YouTube and iTunes. Namaste. Namaste.